Well, thousands of motorists are making their way through to the Pomlani uh, toll plaza towards the northern direction. Most holidaymakers are heading to Limpopo. Gauteng Transport MEC appealed on motorists to respect the law and refrain from drinking and uh, driving. Now, let's get an update. We cross now to our reporter, Patricia Fasahi. Patricia, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Perhaps, Patricia, let's start here. Tell us where exactly you are and what are you observing? Well, good afternoon, no, not and to our viewers. It is certainly a big buzz. I am at the Pumlani Toll Plaza on the northern side. It is, of course, uh, packed with a lot of uh, motorists as they're making uh, their way to their various destinations. And rightfully so, as you've put it, most of them traveling to uh, Limpopo. We're just going to give you shots of what is happening here at the Detour Plaza. And I can tell you uh, at around uh, one o'clock, half past one, uh, we uh, spoke to the traffic authorities and they were counting uh, the vehicles that were traveling through um, this particular toll plaza and it was standing at uh, about uh, 2,500 vehicles that were passing through and that is about uh, an hour and a half ago. So uh, we're probably now sitting at about uh, 3,000 vehicles that are passing through this uh, toll plaza per hour. So it is hectic. It is stretching f uh, for about a kilometer on. You can't see it clearly because obviously we can't be that side uh, uh, of the road due to safety concerns but to give us more the more of the nitty gritties the exact details and uh, that all important message about uh, safety and motorists really playing their part as they navigate on the country's roads and the important part to avoid the carnage the scourge on the country's roads I'm now joined by Mr. Silo Maremani he is the spokesperson for the Gauteng police it is a hectic uh, you as uh, traffic uh, police authorities you have a busy day in, 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 in fact uh, your busy schedule started from around the 15th of December it is picking up uh, today just telling tell us about your operation in particular on this stretch of road thank you so much for the opportunity Patricia well it is that time of the year when we are expecting heavy traffic volumes as you can see Vehicles passing through this toll gate, two, over 2,000 vehicles are passing through this toll gate per hour, which is an indication to us as law enforcement agency that our roads are very, very busy, especially on this road. Now we've got a number of problems that we are encountering in as far as motorists are concerned. We see people, uh, you know, uh, running out of patience, driving on the yellow lane, which constitute reckless and negligent driving. Now, these are the type of behavior that we will not tolerate as law enforcement officials. Uh, unsafe overtaking. Just yesterday on the N14, before uh, the R55, we have lost lives unnecessarily so. Uh, somebody was, was uh, driving a vehicle with a heavily lo loaded trailer. We are saying to our people, every time when they are utilizing our public roads, we encourage them to use our roads responsibly. You can see, even if you are not a law enforcement official, that your vehicle is not properly loaded because an object may just fall off from a vehicle. So we are having these people who are overloading their trailers. And we are appealing to our people really to say, we encourage responsible road uh, usage because it is the responsibility of all categories of road users. It doesn't matter whether you are a pedestrian, whether you are a motorist, whether you are a driver. Safety starts with you. And that's why we are here. We are here in large numbers as law enforcement authorities. But let me tell you, I must accept that you do not have traffic officers in every corner. You don't need a traffic officer to force you to tell you that what you are doing is wrong. It's all about compliance. If we only follow the rules of the law and then we stick to that, we should be able to contain the situation. Let's talk about heavy vehicles. I see a lot of trucks passing. There's a bus behind you. There's more buses, more trucks. Often we see um, the dangerous accidents that take place, in particular where trucks are involved. Uh, throughout this year, we've seen the shocking headlines where trucks uh, were predominantly responsible for the fatalities. What is the action plan to combat that, to make sure that the check and balances are in place and to ensure that 
the, the trucks keep to the right speed and they really just obey the rules of the road and drive responsibly. Well, we are utilizing our traffic control centers, the, co the so-called TCC, where we are stopping these trucks to check the overloading of this vehicle and the general roadworthiness thereof. For example, we check things like your uh, brakes, we check things like your tires. Let me just say the roadworthiness of that truck. But one other factor that bothers us, the issue of fatigue. Many of these truck drivers are driving a long, a very long destination without them having to keep a rest. So we encourage them to say every, at least every two to three hours, they must make sure that at least they are stopping every two to three hours so that they can rest. Because amongst the things that bothers us is really fatigue that creeps in. You find that a person uh, is forcing to drive from Pretoria to for example, to Deben without this person resting. Obviously, when they get to rest, their concentration level on the road fades away. But we are in the ground as law enforcement officials to ensure that the truck drivers are compliant in terms of the necessary papers that they should have and the general roadworthiness thereof. And when it comes to the issue of drinking and driving, that is another headache for uh, traffic officials uh, where rightfully so we have seen the numbers we have seen uh, the uh, you know dangerous accidents that are, are linked to drinking and driving uh, what exactly will be done differently this year to perhaps make sure that those who break the law those who still drink and drive pay the price let me tell you that uh, we are arresting every person who drink under the influence of intoxicating liquor. It is just uh, illegal and it's, uh, it's not worth doing it. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to, to announce that at least in Parliament, negotiations are ongoing to take the legal limit away. I have not seen any person drinking at a Shebin, for example, where they are having, you know, uh, a gadget to check whether they are over the legal limit. Let me tell you, our officers are right at Shebins and Taverns as we are speaking now, just to check, to tell the people that we will not tolerate any form of lawlessness in as far as driving. But does your officers respect the law? How many times do we not hear of those very same uh, officers who then take bribes instead of them upholding the law? They are not ours. Let me tell you, we will replace this brown uniform, if need be, with the orange uniform, because we are law enforcement officials. We've got to protect the integrity. When people see us on the road, they should see a symbol of peace. They must see road safety in us. Now, the moment when we allow our officers to be involved with, in other you know, illicit activities, such as corruption, uh, being on the side of the law, it's not our people. We, uh, we will enforce the law unconditionally. So the message that really I want to ferry to our people out there is that lawlessness will not be tolerated. It doesn't matter whether you are an MEC, whether you are a law enforcement official, if you do anything wrong, you will face the full might of the law. Manpower, resources, vehicles, do you have enough of that? We are having enough. You can just patrol on this very same road. Uh, we have got over 50 officers just from this stretch up until uh, uh, Carousel Plaza, where the border of Houteng, we are sharing the border with Limpopo. We've got more than uh, uh, enough officers as well as vehicles just to be visible on the road. Our message is very clear, Patricia. We know for a fact there are three factors influencing our road safety environment. The first sector factor is the uh, human being himself, the person, then the vehicle as well as the road environment. But let me tell you, majority of road traffic crashes which are encountered are human made. When we go and investigate, we find that the vehicle was overloaded. We find that the vehicle, uh, maybe the driver was so tired that he did not rest. So we've got quite a number of issues that if we can change our attitude, especially from a driver perspective, to make sure that we ferry these people that we are having uh, safely so to their various destinations. We will all arrest the situation and we should all, all of us arrive safely so. Annually, we sit, we sit with these staggering, shocking road fatality statistics that reflect the carnage on our roads. And uh, that at the backdrop of those very same uh, 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 factors that you have just mentioned, the safety campaigns, the boots on the ground, the zero tolerance, but then we find ourselves with uh, the statistics and every time we hear police officers, uh, traffic officials, the politicians saying that um, there will be zero tolerance. But 
are South Africans heeding the call? Where is it going wrong? Why do we still see the carnage on our roads? The police are doing what they need to do and there's enough boots on the ground. Human factor, like I've just mentioned. Why are they not listening to the police? I am saying to you, one of the things that I am delighted about as a law enforcement official is the fact that negotiations are at an advanced level where the legal limit is just going to be taken away. In other words, nobody will be allowed to consume alcohol. It doesn't matter uh, what the limit would be. Say, there are negotiations going on because even so, you are quite correct. I am not going to sit here and deny the fact that we've got a problem with human beings. Just yesterday evening, we have arrested a person doing 238 kilometers per hour on the N14 driving a Golf 8. Now, we, we do have pockets of people who are still, you know, violating our road traffic rules, regardless of the campaigns that we have. What we are doing now, we are in cahoots with other departments, such as the like of the Department of Justice and so on, just to make sure that whenever a person has been found violating a traffic a rule, you know, the punishment thereof should go severe. By the way, in terms of National Road Traffic Act, number 93 of 1996, a person can just be sent to direct imprisonment up to a maximum of seven years when they are found guilty, when they've committed an, uh, uh, an offense on our public road. So it's just for us to get our uh, ducks in the row, to get the Department of Justice uh, you know, the lenient sentence that these people sometimes are getting. We don't want them to get fines, for example. When a person is driving under the influence of alcohol, that person is endangering the lives of ordinary citizens of this county. Now, according to me, personally, I feel that person should get direct imprisonment. And the Road Traffic Act allows the presiding officer to meet out such kind of syndrome. Now, those are the type of discussions that we are having as law enforcement official in Kahoos with the Department of Justice and other role, uh, role players such as our National Prosecuting Authority. All right. Thank you so much there, Mr. Selo Maremani. He is the spokesperson for the Gauteng Traffic Police. Message very clear. It is your responsibility. It is your life. Make sure that you drive safely on the country's road respect the law and of course think for others who are tra traveling alongside you continue to monitor what is happening here at uh, the Pumlani toll plaza uh, from here we toss it back to studio Patricia before I let you go a very interesting conversation there that you're having with the official there and I mean I've just read the road uh, traffic management corporation report you know just highlighting how dangerous the weekends are, particularly on the roads, citing Friday, Saturday and Sunday are the three days where most fatal crashes actually happen. You know, they also said that the three days contributed 54 percent to the total number of deadly accidents over the festive period last year. So just in terms of the conversation that you have been having, uh, what are you noticing on the road in terms of behavior? Are you seeing any reckless driving as, as, as what was um, just alluded? to a short while ago. Well, Unati, from what we have been observing and what I am observing, it seems like everything is in order. But you would have to understand that uh, there is a lot of visibility on uh, the road, a lot of police visibility at uh, the uh, moment. So, of course, that in itself inspires for road users to behave uh, responsibly. Mm. But the issue comes in when there's very low visibility or when there's no police or on stretches of road where there is literally uh, very few vehicles where people start speeding and the reckless driving, the reckless overtaking start taking place, but also that other irresponsibility which is drinking and driving, which normally takes place late at night when a lot of people are coming back from parties uh, and so forth. Uh, so this time of the day, normally a lot of uh, law-abiding behavior that we see, but uh, once the police are not uh, very much visible and they get on those long roads late at night, the behavior tends to change. And I think the appeal and the safety campaigns try to really penetrate on that period when they know that people take advantage, they tend to be 
become lawless because um, the eyes of the law is not on them. In particular, you know, we've heard the statistics from around uh, 10 o'clock in the evening to around 4 o'clock in the morning. That is where most of the fatal accidents that are taking place. But the other issue, trucks as well that are not roadworthy, that are speeding, buses um, that are not roadworthy. We know this time of the year, a lot of people are actually dependent on buses and taxis. So it's not just the motorists, but it is also public transport, in particular the buses uh, and taxis that also need to make sure that they do their part, uh, their roads are, uh, their, their, their vehicles are roadworthy and they do not speed. So there's a lot of factors, but the human error uh, remains the biggest contributor and the other, of course, uh, the issue of corrupt officials who still continue to take bribes do not do what is supposed to happen. We've also heard from the AA saying that uh, the criminal justice system that is still very lenient and we've just heard Mr. Maremani also talking about that element, the issue of accountability, making sure that those who do find themselves in the courts for in particular drinking and driving, they need not to get those lenient sen sentences. The courts must send out a stern message when it comes to drinking and driving. Patricia, thank you so much for that. Of course, Patricia giving us an update in terms of how the roads are looking at uh, like during this festive uh, period time. Of course, she's from Pumlani Tall Plaza towards the northern direction. Very interesting conversations around how do we then start to change driver behavior.